It's great to be here, and it's uh, great to be among you all. Congratulations! It's really, uh, it's quite a lovely moment for me, in that uh, I recall very, very clearly uh, when I was young, and uh, I was looking around for other people like me, uh, people that were bookish people that read books and kind of felt infected by the book that they read, could feel that book inside of them, could walk down the street thinking about the characters, could wake up thinking about it, could write in notebooks, but always looking for those other kids, you know, because they weren't always around, you know, the bookish ones. And so uh, when I finally, I had to go to, to college, I went to college, some of us do. And uh, I went to, uh, to get a BFA, a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in creative writing. And uh, that's where I met all those bookish kids. And it was like, ah, my people are here, you know. There they are, you know. The, you know. And it's so exciting to be around people that really take literature seriously. And don't just look at literature as an object but also look at it as something that becomes part of your interior life rather than just something that's part of the exterior life. And I think that's what we're always trying to do when we write and when we read. We're always looking for that, that kind of metronomic system where you know, you're looking out, you're looking in. You're looking out, you're looking in. And in that same way, when we write books, like if you just tore a book up, you know, like just ripped it apart, 50% of the book is generally on the interior of the character, their thinking, their imagination, their emotions, and 50% is the outside world, the description of the world and the movements out here. So we're really becoming, as writers, very dimensional people. You know? And one little thing, just one little trick, and it works every time, it's good, it is uh, when you're at home, and just stand in the mirror, right? Like if you just stand, you know, like that mirror you get dressed in front of, you know, like there's a mirror, a door mirror. And you stand there and you see yourself. And you just see yourself. You just see the surroundings. And you see yourself. And it's the physical world. And then if you close your eyes and just keep them closed for about a minute or two, you see the interior world. And then you can say to yourself, which is bigger? And it's always the interior world. You know? And that's the world that we really are building. So, I brought a lot of stuff today um, to talk about. And first, uh, you know, let's just talk about the exterior world. So, stuff that I use for writing. So this um, is my fifth grade journal. This is a picture of my fifth grade journal. And I have about 200 of these from when I was a kid. And I used to keep these little journals um, and I used to write stuff about myself and my family, and, uh, and I liked keeping journals, and I kept them because my sister kept them. And uh, it wasn't my idea, it was my sister's idea. And she was older, and she was just clever and smart <laughs> and powerful. And it was the power that attracted me to writing. <laughs> it wasn't the art, it was the power. Because she would sit in the kitchen with a journal open and wait for anyone to walk through that kitchen. And as soon as they did, she would go, uh-huh, and she'd write something down. And I'd go, what would you say about me? And she'd go, I'm not telling. And then my mom would come and she'd go, oh yeah, you, mm -hmm, and write something down. And my mother would go, what would you say about me? And she'd say, that's for me to know and you to find out. And then my dad would come in, she'd do the same thing. And it was very clear early on that the person who wrote it down had the power. And everybody wanted to know. Nobody wanted to know what I was thinking. But they all wanted to know what she was thinking, because there was in writing, you know, it's like stamped in there. So, getting journals. I still write a lot of, the, a lot of my books by, by hand. So, uh, I'm going to get this going. Wrong way. So that's kind of what the inside of my, my journals look like. And, and so, I, uh, I go to the library every day. When I'm writing, I, I go to this library called the Boston Athenaeum, and it's a private subscription library. And uh, they have them here, too. They have them in New York. Like, I go to the 79th Street Society Library, and that's where we're related to them. So whenever I'm in New York, I go up to 79th Street, and I 
go in that fabulous little library, you tuck away, you go to the top floor, and nobody knows you're there. So um, I write books out by hand. So I take this. It's a good tool. You always want a good journal. Small is good. These little books. Uh, so these will be, this will be, I'm working on a novel now. That'll be the next novel. That'll be the next novel. Okay? But while you're working this year, your mind might be two years ahead of you. So you're getting little ideas. They're coming in all the time. All day long, ideas are coming. And what you have to be really good at is accepting every idea. And go, oh yeah, I don't know what that is, but I think it's the beginning of something. I think that's character development. I think that's an ending. I think that's really a, an insightful moment for a character to have. So you need to like be ahead of yourself. Like, I'm working on this novel now, but these are the books, they give me like a giant head start for the next novel. Post-it notes, they're not post-it notes, so three by five cards, and those little dividers like this. So these are all chapters, right? So what you do is, you know, you have this, and then all day long, all these random ideas that come in, because they're all random. You never sit down and write a novel, like first word first, second word second, third word third. That never happens. It's all like this random mosh pit that's going on, and you're just like piecing it all together. So this helps you keep all your ideas in order. And you can kind of go, oh yeah, that's kind of like in that chapter. So I'm always, you know, like this is a kind of a novel in pieces. And then, uh, what else? Uh, let's see, oh, that's just more odds and ends of stuff. Oh, you have these things. Don't you love these? So like, see all these little colored tabs? Like once you start keeping journals, one of the things that happens is, let's say you have a journal with 500 pages and you've written all 500 pages. Now you go back to try and find something, and you're like, I know it's in there somewhere. Oh, where? So, on the first page of your journal, you get a whole bunch of these. Like, these are eight different colors. And then you tab them in there. You have one page, right? It's like your legend page. And then you write on them characters, plot line, interior, great images, dialogue, you know. And then, as you're writing in your journal, right, you're like, oh, that's great dialogue. So you slap that color on that page and have it tab out so that you know, oh, yeah, you know, you can leaf through these old diaries and you go, got it, you know, that was a great thought. I thought I lost it, but now I tabbed it, so now I can find it. I know that sounds so weird, but, you know, when you're living in your head all the time, it's, you know, you've got to be organized. <laughs> Finally, the other thing before we get really started. Um, uh, pens. I love pens. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I really love good pens. So, um, and I write by hand. Like I said, I write all my books out by hand first. And then I type them up. I, I have a computer, a little computer that goes with me. But then I have pens. So I just take my pens, you know, with me. So I take that bag, I've got all my stuff, plus a little computer, and I just walk out my front door, walk across the town, across the Boston Common, poof, I'm up in the library, and I'm working, just with, with my stuff. And I have a locker at the library, too. That's how often I'm there. I'm like an employee. Like whenever they have parties, they always invite me. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the mascot. You know, like if they had a library cat, that would be me. So. Just the tools, it's just your basic stuff, and it's nice to have some stuff. You know, like, if you're a doctor, you know, you wouldn't be using an old rusty scalpel. You'd have something good, you know, and if you're a carpenter, you know, uh, which I was, I, I still have my carpentry tools, you know. You use that stuff. Okay, enough of that. Now, let's get to uh, books. When you're thinking of books, you're always thinking content, what you write about, structure, how you organize what you write about. That's really what you're thinking. And the sequence is content first, structure second. Because if you start with structure first, you're like, so I've got structure. Where's the content? Every, nobody cares about your structure. Structure is a rather invisible thing, beginning, middle, and end, problem, action, solution. But the content is key. 
So I brought a lot of things for you to see. Oh, hold on. Pause this moment.